Okay, guys, so I was starting to work on doing the last six of the houses um, since I already did a video on the first six, and I decided to come up with a uh, simplified chart because I didn't really like the chart that I shared before with you, and I came up with um, this. Okay. And, uh, then I decided to meditate and do some divination and <laughs> I talked to Zeus and he gave me in a completely different chart. And it's this. And I, um, basically just wanted to share that with you all because, um, that's what happens when I meditate and receive messages that way versus when I just kind of like go with what my current understanding is or what I've learned from, you know, other sources online, books and uh, like media resources. So <laughs> it's really like a completely different, um, I guess like way of doing astrology is like on one hand you're studying from other people whereas like I am trying to study from spirits directly and it's a lot more I don't know it's easier maybe for me to like learn from other people than it is uh to like kind of go out on my uh, my own go like rogue so to speak Raygon rogue that's kind of what this channel is all about is me sharing my wisdom um that i've acquired through talking to spirits and i think i lost track of that a little bit and i really want to um, refocus myself and get back to sharing that with all of y'all so um all that to say like the first piece that i really have to share with you is um about the 12 houses and i mentioned in the video about what are the 12 houses how the houses really take um their structure from the zodiac wheel and the zodiac wheel each of the signs in the zodiac wheel describe the annual season and so that was kind of the foundation that Zeus actually used to give me like a new frame of reference for what each of the houses are actually about. So like when you look at the first house, we talked about how the first house is the vehicle that you're driving and it's the lens through which you see the world. And that really corresponds to the seed. And the seed, it's, it has all this potential and it has all this individuality, but it's really encapsulated in a shell. So like when we come into this life, we're really a seed. We're really, um, we're potential life, even though we are actually physical life and there is all this unique DNA within us. Um, we are in a shell, so to speak. We haven't come out. We haven't blossomed. And then in the second house uh, for Taurus, um, the image that I received was of being like planted in the ground, which really resonates with the whole idea of like Taurus being um, uh, Mother Earth and the resources and just this very like grounded energy. And so when you think of the second house, now we're taking that seed and we're putting it in the ground. And it's being grounded and food is really what keeps us in our bodies we what happens if we don't eat food we eventually will die we'll leave our bodies so when you think about when you consume food it's centering you into this manifestation it's grounding you into where we are so with that being said that really sheds lights on how the second house um, shows where we can actually be grounded and where we can actually um, hold on to this life because we are actually spirits and we are being put into this body, but what's keeping us here? And that is our, you know, food. And that is 
uh, Mother Earth, like we're being grounded and rooted um, uh, into this life, basically through our resources. And, you know, um, then in the third house, which would be ruled by Gemini, we talked about how Gemini is the communication. Well, the picture that Zeus gave me is basically just um, a reaching. So now the seed is starting, it's been planted in the ground, and now it's starting to reach out and interact with its environment, right? So there's little sprouts that are reaching up to um, above the ground. And then there's also little fingers that are like starting to like root down into the ground on the other way. And when you think about Gemini and you think about like our primitive communication, when we first start to communicate with others, it's to communicate our needs. So our first step in communication is actually about receiving. We first learn to love um, in a needy way. It's not in a giving way. It's in a receiving way. So Gemini is just, it's that primitive um, communication that uh, is a result of us needing to have our needs met. Okay, so then the third house, or sorry, the fourth house, um, which is ruled by Cancer. Cancer is associated with the moon and with the mother and with the family, as we previously discussed. But here, this is really nurtured growth of the plant. So now this is this plant that is flourishing and growing and expanding like the moon expands every month um, and like the ocean expands um, and the tide comes in. Uh, so there's um, this, uh, this nurturing and this growth that happens in this area of our lives, which makes sense why we associate uh, the areas of our lives associated to the mother. Some people say the father, some people say the past, some people say um, the inner self um, and the emotions. And it's really all about um, nurtured growth, right? So what happens to the seed next or to the plant next? The plant flowers, okay? So it develops this beautiful, unique um, expression and the purpose of the expression is to be looked at. It's to be celebrated. Like we smell it and we're all, oh, we appreciate it. It's so, oh, it smells so good and it looks so good. And it's just, it's this glory of the plant, right? When it flowers, a lot of the time, um, that's the whole reason why we want to plant around is because of the flowers. So that's governed by Leo and you have Leo being the house of self-expression. It's the house of dating, um, which makes sense because the flowering has to do with attracting mates <laughs> for pollination. And um, it's the house that influences um, our self-expression and our creativity, which is really what the flower is all about. And then um, in the last house of the uh, first six houses, um, so the sixth house, we have, uh, we talked about earlier, we talked about Virgo being basically um, the house of health and the house of work and the house of service. Okay. So how does that, uh, make sense in the wheel of the year and the cycle of the plant and the cycle of our lives? Well, this is the gardening that occurs. Um, sometimes at this point, plants have to be pruned. Sometimes at this point, things have to be, uh, you know, the garden has to be weeded. Um, sometimes at this point you have to water the garden um, it's all about uh, gardening it's all about cultivating the health of the planet or not the planet the health of the plant um, you know there might be bugs that have to be taken care of so it really is this fo focus on perfection this focus on health and this focus on like working to do what needs to be done um, so that really corresponds really really well with why um, why that house is about all the things that it's about work, service, um, analysis, because the gardener is essentially the force that comes in and analyzes the situation and determines what needs to be done. So they're the problem solvers and it's the problem solving aspect in us. So, um, that is it for the first, uh, six houses.
the seventh house. The seventh house is the pollination. So in the first house, we have the seed, which could be considered the masculine. And then in the seventh house, we have the pollination of the flower, which be, could be considered um, at that point, the feminine. And so really in the seventh house, it describes who we partner with for creation. And that could be our uh, spouse. It could be our romantic partners. It could be our business partners. Um, but it really describes our cohort, our co-creator. And um, the, uh, the feminine to our masculine, for example. Um, so that's the seventh house. And so we really look to the seventh house to determine what's going on with our partnerships. And then in the eighth house, following this analogy, um, what always happens when you bring the feminine and the masculine together? What always happens with co-creators? Well, they create. But before there's a creation, there has to be um, a destruction. Like there's a transformation that occurs. So with the eighth house, you see basically the flower dying and then turning into a baby fruit. So it's kind of this um, process of transformation that's not as complete as like reincarnation, like the plant's still alive, but it's changing form. It's changing from a flowering plant into a fruiting plant. So that is uh, really, that house is all about transformation and it's really all about um, alchemy and how we move from one state of being to another and sometimes that's painful and sometimes um, you know that happens through uh, sex and sexuality so that's why we associate the eighth house with basically anything that goes on behind closed doors because a lot of the time uh, creation um, and recreation is like a very private and very um, personal thing so we have sex behind closed doors. We get naked behind closed doors. We are making ourselves vulnerable and we are letting go of a certain part of ourselves. So we see the eighth house actually being um, a, a level of letting go in order that change can occur. And it's, you know, opposite of our second house, which is about being planted. Okay. Because all of the signs are really um, opposites of the one that's across the wheel. So the first, we have the seed across the wheel is the seventh. That's the pollination. And then you have the second house is planting. And the eighth house, you have um, the letting go of the of the flower so that it can become uh, fruiting. Okay. Um, the, the houses that are, are the day houses that are at the top half of the natal chart, the seventh house through the twelfth house, um, are really about the maturation of the plant and how it begins to give back as opposed to um, receive from. Okay, so after we have the uh, flower dying and turning into fruit, then we have the ninth house. And the ninth house is all about the expansion and the growth of the fruit. So that really um, correlates really well with uh, what the ninth house can be about for us. It's about ascension and it's about higher thought and it's about uh, philosophy and it's about, um, you know, college and um, expansion of the mind and travel and all these things, because really it's the period of growth of our fruit. And when you realize like why we're here in this life, um, we're not here just to receive but we're here to transform and we're here to change and we're here to grow. And then that leads us into the 10th house, which is the house of harvest, which is why it's associated with the career, because this is the house where we're giving back to the world. We've received all these nutrients and all this cultivation and all this personal expansion and transformation. And now at this point, the student becomes the teacher. And um, this is the part of life where we take everything that we have accumulated and we're giving back and we're giving back to the younger generation. We're giving back to our peers. We're basically full and we are um, 
giving back. That's why like with the 10th house, we have the career, whereas the sixth house, we have the work. And why are they in separate houses? Sometimes that's confusing to people because they think of work and career as the same, but it's really not. The difference being work is um, like analyzing what needs to be done and doing it versus the career is a different place where now you're full and here is how you are like giving back and here is how you are contributing. So it's really like your major contribution in life. So we can really look to the 10th house or the mid heaven to see how somebody gives back to the world, how somebody makes a contribution to others um, and how somebody uh, really nourishes and uh, teaches the world. Okay. So then we have the 11th house. The, the 11th house is the feast. It's communion. And at this point, um, we are being consumed, <laughs> um, by, um, the, um, basically the environment. So sometimes that is, uh, being eaten by the animals or sometimes that is by um, the fruit dropping and um, being becoming part of the uh, earth again. But in either way, um, it's about communion, which is this realization that occurs called enlightenment that many people get by sitting and breathing and um, emptying their mind is realizing that we are uh, codependent with our environment, that this whole cosmos is an, or organ uh, an organism that um, exists uh, within itself, and that by being consumed, um, we're the fruit in this analogy, and we're being consumed by um, those that are feasting, it's um, a unification because when you're eating something, then it becomes like one with you. And, um, you know, this 11th house really has all to do with communion and realizing the unity and realizing the oneness. And so that's how it gets to be the house of friendships and the house of networking and the house of enlightenment <laughs> and all those things, because they're all related. It's when you realize that there's this network there's this like web um that you're a part of and communing with that um communing with other people and communing with uh really that awareness and being ready to let go of uh your individuality which across the wheel is our individuality and self-expression with the flowering leo so finally, in the last house, the 12th house, we have the disillusion of the self, disillusion of the ego. And in our analogy here, this is, um, this is really where uh, we are composted and where we return to the earth and become uh, indistinguishable from the earth once again. And all that's left is the seed and that really brings us all the way back around to our first house.